Amen? He wants it all. He don't like, he don't like when we, uh, I used to tell guys around the ministry, God don't like a part-time lover. He wants a full-time lover because he's full-time with us. Anybody ever been in a relationship? And I know you have. <laughs> and you was the part-time lover? <laughs> You love them when you wanted to, and then when you leave them, then you love with somebody else. Yeah. And many of us had that because we had another love affair with, in this ministry anyhow, with drugs and alcohol, and we had other spirits that controlled us, and we allowed that to be our first love. Amen? Amen. And boy, did we love it too, didn't we? Until we ran out and misery came. Amen? And even in, in, in that addiction, you was miserable. The only excitement you had was going to get it. <laughs> and some of us got sick going to get it, too. Amen? It's crazy, ain't it? A crazy mindset the devil had put on our minds because we followed it. Amen? But thank God for his mercy and his grace. Amen? Today we're going to talk about something that's very vital for each and every individual. We all go through it. We have a private war that goes on within our own selves. Besides anything else, we have a private war going in within ourselves that we have to overcome. So we're going to talk about our private war that's within us today. I can sit down. Don't be scared now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's go to um, Romans 8. If you don't have a private war that you're going through, you can have some of mine. <laughs> because I'm telling you, it's, it's serious. It's drastic. The enemy is out to kill, steal, and destroy. And he's good at it because we was once his. And we was born in sin. And we live in the sin nature. We carry sin nature all around us. When we got free in Christ, we, got, we received the covenant of Christ and we became saved first. Then we became born again. And then we had a new state of mind that was going on. But the thing is, we're like little babies. We had to be nurtured. We had to be taught. You know, and even in God's presence, you still have to be taught how to, to walk in this earth. Because we didn't get to heaven yet. We're still stuck on the sinful nature earth. And there's a lot of stuff that goes around us. That's come, he says that greater he that's in us than he that's in the world. So he has to live within us so he can direct us through this, through this world. Amen? Let's go to Romans 8, 18. We're going to talk about some things. Some things might hit you right between the eyes. Because it hit me between the eyes as I was getting this teaching together and I uh, had to self-examine myself. So this teaching is not for you think only you. It's for the one that speaks too. Amen? Because the Holy Spirit is speaking to all of us. We're all in this thing together. <laughs> Amen? Romans 8, 18. And the word says, For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the Son of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willing, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God, for we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains 
together until now. We all have birth pains, don't we? How many times you think, you, like we just said, saying, Lord, I need more. I need more of you. We, we want more because we want to change out of that sin nature that dwells within us that we want to get rid of, but we can't get rid of self. So we have to learn how to deny ourselves. So it takes a commitment. It takes cooperation. It takes discipline. I have everybody goes through a private fight within. Everybody. Not one person is not trying to overcome self that's in the body of Christ. You're in the world, you ain't trying to overcome nothing. You're just doing what worldly, the world does, because that's what the world, worldly ways is. But when you come into Christ, there's a standard that we have to uphold, and we have to fight to be governed by, all of us. The only thing you can do is hold on and wait on the Lord. Even when you're going through it, even though nothing changed, you have to wait. He's coming. The word says, you call upon the name of the Lord, and he shall what? Answer you and show you great and mighty things. But you have to wait for the answer. Don't just call him, Lord, I need your help. And da, 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 da. Okay, I'm going to go do my business. You didn't come when I wanted you to. That's not the way the Lord works. He wants you to learn as you go through your struggles. That's where your learning comes from. How else are you going to learn if you don't go through struggles? You know, I, when I played sports, you know, like Pastor was teaching about that second win. Man, you be out there trying to get it, and, then, and you, you're struggling, but that second win come, boom! You can go forever. You're not tired no more. But you had a struggle to get there, to get that release. Amen? Um, only God can bring you through it. Sometimes he's protecting you from things that you don't even know yet. And he's trying to avoid you from getting yourself hurt. Because he's our father, isn't he? He's a loving father at that. Don't expect the voice of the stranger. Don't accept it. Don't accept the voice of the stranger. You must be able to let him put you in position until it's time for you to come out. Because he knows the timing of seasons. He knows the season that you need to go or stop. You know, the Lord showed me something this morning, and I had to laugh. Remember when we were little kids? How many of y'all played green light, red light? <laughs> you had a sense of humor, man. <laughs> And, he, and he'll tell you, green light, go. Red light, stop. And you don't stop. You keep on going. You guys go back to the line <laughs> and start all over again because you might just hit a brick wall. <laughs> yeah, I just got that revelation. He, he's funny, you know. He, he treats us like children, you know, because we are children, right? Yeah, I never played. I never thought about that until then, a long time. Red light, green light. Stop, go, stop, go. But that's how he operates. He tells when to go. He tells when to stop. And when we stop, we're covered in his protection. We're covering his protection. And then when he say go, go now. We go out and do what we got to do. Come back in. We're covered in the protection of his wings. Amen? There will be a... Now, when you do that, when you come out, there will be a celebration and a revelation that comes with it. Amen? Nothing will satisfy you until he comes. Sometimes we take things for granted. You know? We must hide in the secret place. We must hide in the secret place of the Most High. The greatest suffering we do is within ourselves. That's the greatest suffering. Because nobody else knows what you're going through. Because sometimes you ask somebody, honey, what's, like, uh, husband and wife, or, or your brothers, or, or your sisters and sister, what are you going through? Oh, nothing. 
You know they're going through some, but they can't even identify what they're going through at times when they want, want to tell you. But they're going through something because we're, remember, we're groaning to change. We're groaning to change. Everything is being shifted in the body of Christ. And that's for another war. There's a war that God's preparing us for. A bigger war. Because you got to remember, he says, we're going to glory to glory. Level to level. So when you complete that level, there's another demon waiting at the next level. And you got to get prepared through the level that you're at to be able to have the strength and the, the power of the anointing that comes forth to learn how to fight the new demon. Amen? Let's go to 1 Kings. First Kings 17. And we're going we're gonna to see something about patience. First Kings 17, verse 8. Hallelujah. I mean, yeah, when you came to Total Freedom, those that came through Total Freedom had a life experience change. The things that you once knew, you found out there was lies. And the things that you thought was yours, you found out it really wasn't. And then you had to learn to let it go. That's the process, is to learn to let go so that you can receive something new. Because God is always trying to bring new into us. Because there's so much of him. He never runs out. He will never run out to give you, man, I got everything. God gave me everything. You know how you have some people say, God gave me everything. I'm good. No, no you're not. <laughs> I don't think you're good, bro. You're still stalemated. What's that in your hand? Oh, no, that don't look right like God to me. That's not a character of his of his glory. And what that word you're saying? Ooh, I can't associate with the words you're speaking. They don't, they're not speaking to edify my father. You know, because you gotta understand, we judge by the fruits. Even the fruits within ourselves. How many times you say something that slipped and you say, oh my God, I didn't even think I had that still in me. Mm -hmm. It was suddenly, wasn't it? Then he said, suddenly you will fall into various foul trials and tribulations. <laughs> it's the testing of what? Your what? Your faith. The thing is, we said, supposed to have a repented heart at all times. At all times. Today is the new day. Right now is a new day. The past, I just spoke it. The present, I'm speaking right now. The future is what I'm about to speak. We live right now in three dimensionally in that area. So as God, you ask God for forgiveness, he forgives you, and he says, don't do it no more. That means turn from it and keep on moving. And don't beat yourself up in the sin, because that's where the devil plays with your mind. You let go of it and move forward towards the mark. That's the goal, to get free. Let heaven come on the earth and be a reflection of who he is. Amen? All right, let's move on. 1 Kings 17, verse 8 says, Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose. 
So he arose, let me find myself again, and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat and, and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me, and afterward make some up for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day of the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah, and she said, and she and she and he and her household ate for many days, for many days. Then the bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he has spoke to Elijah. Some he'll test on your patience. Some of us, he'll take us all the way to the end till we feel like we're about to die. <laughs> Lord, you don't understand. I will die in this situation. He said, I got you. I got you. And he'll bring the answer in the right time. You know, God is a right on God. He's a right on time God. He'll bring, he wants to see you fall off the cliff so that he can come and swoop you up. That's what he wants to do. So that you can only trust in who? Him. Not pastor, not David, not your mama, not your daddy, not your sister, not your brother, not anybody else but him. Because he wants to be your head of your life. With anything else, it will interfere. But him being the head, that means that you'll seek after him. You'll know that he will answer you in due season. You'll know that even though you might not have the answer right now, you know it's coming. That's those who trust in the Lord and wait and wait. Amen? Some he'll test you in areas so you know he's your provider. God will take you to the ultimate limit so there is nothing to hold on to and to take you right to the end where you really, when you're ready to die. Then he gives you an answer so you can come at the end of yourself. Now you sow out of your lack. Now you sow out of your lack. Now you got to stand something. As you sow out your lack, that comes with praise and worship. That comes with prayer. That comes with being disciplined, learning discipline, and being obedient to his word. You know, because in his word, as you, as you get the, as you first ask for mercy and you repent, then you give a place for the spirit to let the blood come back in to, to take the place of the covenant that you have with him, and then you allow the spirit to come in. So that the Spirit give you power to overcome. Can't do it out of your own thinking. You can't do it out of your own ways. It's governed by the way that God had to set up so that He be in charge. He will be the power to get you through. Amen.
Wait, wait a second. Let's go to, um, yeah, God gave me this this morning. Psalm 145. Thank you, Lord. Psalms 145. The word says here in verse 1, I will exalt you, my God, O King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. I will meditate on the glorious splendors of your majesty and on your wondrous works. Men shall speak of the might of your awesome acts, and I will declare your greatness. They shall utter the memory of your great goodness and shall sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercy are over all his works. All his works shall praise you, O Lord, and your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power, to make known of the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord upholds all who fall and raises up all who bow down. The eyes of all look expediently to you, and you gave, give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, gracious in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him. To all who call upon him in truth, he will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. He also will hear the cry and save them. The Lord preserves all who loves him, but the wicked he will destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, and the flesh shall bless his holy name forever and ever. So the Lord will hear you when you praise him. When you praise him in what? Truth. That means you have to check yourself out. Get yourself right so that you come to him boldly to his throne. Because the devil wants to put doubt, fear, unbelief, and everything else in there so that you can think that you're not worthy to be his son or his daughter. You got to understand something. God wants to save you more than you want to be saved. He want to hold you more than you want to be held. He want to mold you more than you want to be molded. But he want to be done in the way that he forms it. And that how he sees it. You know, God, wait a second. I got other things to do. I, I, can, I can fix myself. And a lot of times we try to do that and what happens? It says that the word says that God even comes for those who fall. And he picks them back up. A lot of people, when you fall, a lot of people condemn you. But that is the place where God will help you to overcome. You can't be concerned about people when it comes to the Lord. Because everybody's going to judge you. The true judge, the thing is, you need to judge yourself and get yourself right so that when they judge you, you are right. So then, then, you, accord, then you can walk boldly and according to God's will. And you don't have to have shame and, and, and anything else that's attached to it. But as you lift yourself up and let God sustain you, it doesn't matter no more. That was the past. But as you keep on pressing for the future with him, that past will exceedingly go to a distance from you. And it has no power as you stay in his, in his presence. Amen? All right, let's go to 2 Corinthians 10. It 
So shout to the Lord. Give him glory. Give him praise. Don't be afraid to scream out to him. You don't know what I've been through. Why I, why I scream the way I scream to the Lord. I shout to the Lord because I know what he brought me out of. I'm not ashamed of the Jesus Christ that delivered me. There's no fear to give him glory. There's no fear to give him praise. He took me out of the pit when nobody else was there. When I thought I was in hell, and I was, my soul was there. Don't be afraid to give God glory. He's worthy. He's worthy. Second Corinthians. And you all know what that shout might do to prevent you from getting in something that you don't need to. Because <laughs> he works in your past, present, and future. And severance un ungodly soul ties, getting you where you're at right now so you can inherit the blessings that's before you. Amen? Don't get me started. Because <laughs> I know how good God is. I know where I came from. I know that pit. And we, all that came through here should know that pit. That pit is nasty. Amen? Don't forget one thing. Don't forget where you came from. Then you'll know where you need to be going. Amen? And you got to understand something. Like in the Matrix, you remember when um, Trinity told, told uh, what was that, what's that, Mr. Anderson? He said, she opened that door. He said, you don't want to go down that path. You know what's down that path. And he looked down there and he thought about it. And I guarantee you something was telling him, no! <laughs> and he took it and said, and he took the door and said, and he did it. She didn't close it. He closed the door and said, no, I don't want to go down there no more. Because he already received something that he knew he needed to accomplish. And finish. Amen? 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3. For through, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down the arguments and every high thing that exalts self against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience are fulfilled. We must have discipline, obedience, authority, dominion, and victory. Let me say that again. We must have discipline, obedience, authority, dominion, victory, and then we'll have freedom. To overcome doubt, confusion, worldliness, fear, and torment. And that's of the mind of deception from Satan who make us break covenant with God. And that's what he does. He'll make us break covenant with God. The forces of evil will never give up. They will continually try to bring you back. Because you got to remember, they once lived in us. They want the house back. Because now they're in dry land. We're full of water. And moist. 98% wood at that. <laughs> and they want to come back because they once had a body. You know what? They're mad because they don't have their bodies no more, so they have to use ours to do the work that they want to accomplish. And you know, there's no, 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 there's no love in, the, in Satan's kingdom, but they sure do work together real good, don't they? Yeah, they're all working for the same purpose, but they can't stand each other. Isn't that something? It's twisted. 
The forces, the force of evil will never give up. They will bring lust to the eye, lust to the flesh, and pride of life. Always. They will bring lust to the eye, lust to the flesh, and pride of life. If they did to Jesus, what do you think they're going to do to us? Those three things, characters, works. It never failed them yet. Why would they change it up? Why fix something that is not broken? Amen? So we have to outwit them with the Spirit of God. Love overcomes fear. Remember that. If true love is in you, you can overcome that. Amen? Let's go to Philippians 2. With the power of the anointing that break every yoke of bondage. Philippians 2, uh, verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my present only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to do for his good pleasures. Do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God, without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain and labored in vain. Must have reverence of God. He's working in us to do his will. That's what he's working in us. He's working in us to do his will. So we cannot do our own, because we have to deny ourselves and pick up that cross and follow him to fulfill his will. We must be, be filled with the Holy Spirit of God to be obedient to his will. You can't do his will without being obedient. You can't fulfill it by not being obedient to him. Because how else can he direct you? How else can you work with the Holy Spirit? See, everybody thinks the Holy Spirit is supposed to work for you. It's the opposite. We work for the Holy Spirit. Amen? Help wanted. <laughs> Amen? Let's go to Ephesians 5. He said he's our counselor, isn't he? He bears truth, don't he? He come with power, don't he? He knows what we need before we need it. Amen? Amen? And he'll guide us to what we need so we can fulfill it. Amen? Ephesians 5, 15. See, then you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise by understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dispensation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord giving thanks always for all things to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Now, I know the, the husband is going to say, man, you need to read the next verse. You need to read the next verse. <laughs> Why submit to your husbands? 
<laughs> yeah. But you also, the, the husband's supposed to be submitting to the wife. It's, a, it's like a circle. It's a oneness that goes on. Amen? Because I remember being in the Baptist church, and we always hear people saying, my wife's supposed to admit to you, but how are you treating her? Are you, are you treating her right? Are you, are, you, are, you, are, are you the man of God that's covering your house and doing what needs to be done so that she can uh, uh, respect you in the manner that you're supposed to be respected? Are you loving her the way that she's supposed to be cherished? God made it that way for a reason. Amen? I like when Pastor put the smiley face up. And those that know, know what I'm saying. <laughs> Treat her good. Your smiley face will come. <laughs> um, fool is the one that is not filled with the Holy Spirit. That's a fool. That's not full with the Holy Spirit. We must be prepared in season and out of season. When you feel your mind, will, and emotions, you will not care about anything. When you feel in your mind and your will and your emotion, you won't care about anything. Because nothing else will move you. Because it don't matter because you put your trust in the Lord. Because the Holy Spirit is your guidance. He will let you know things yet to come. He will show you. He will guide you. He will teach you. He will empower you. He will strengthen you. Amen? Being filled in the Holy Spirit, you take authority. You have a state of being right here. You have a new mindset. And the will tell you things. He will tell you things to come. So you won't be walking in fear because you know that truth is carrying you. Amen? So you trust in the Lord. Let's go second, where am I? Second Corinthians 3. Verse 4. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. And do not forget his benefits. Do not forget his benefits. Because there's many of them. There's, there's healing in there. There's provision in there. There's, there's a deliverance in there. There's a new mind in there. There's new eyes. There's new way of walking. New way of talking. I'm walking. Anybody? <laughs> hey. It, it's, it's the way God makes things, make it fun, don't he? Because <laughs> that's what I heard. <laughs> yeah, but it's truth. <laughs> to, the, uh, to the younger generation, they say, what? What's that? <laughs> they don't understand that song. <laughs> Second Corinthians 3, verse 4. And we have such trust through Christ towards God, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit brings life. The spirit gives life. We must stay filled. We must have access to the throne. 
then the word, and as we have access to the throne, then the word will become life. The word will become life. Because as you're being filled with the Holy Spirit, now the Spirit can teach you what you're reading. Because he, re- he wrote it so he can teach you how the, this word become illuminated in your life. We be, we'll be becoming walking epistles. The word become flesh, and we become the word. So as we walk, the, walk on this earth, we walk as Jesus walked, as the word walked on this earth with power. Didn't Jesus say that you would do greater and mighty things? Didn't he say that? I'm leaving, but I give you power. To do greater and mighty things. So expect it. And, you know, this time when people pray, they don't come with the expectancy. They just come to pray, and then they, they leave the prayer right there. I know there was a time when a woman had, um, the, there was a place that they had trouble with uh, rain, and the rain would not fall for 40 days in this area in Kansas. And everybody came to the prayer we're meeting, and this old lady came with galoshes and raincoat, the rain hat. She came with expectancy, knowing that that prayer was going to be, because she came by what? Faith. And she came with faith and action to show forth, God, I'm going to pray, and I'm expecting that you're going to answer this prayer. You know, in third world countries, man, they don't have no place to go to the grocery stores like we do and anything else to get an answer. They have to wait on God himself to receive it. Because we Americans have became lazy because everything is given to us that we don't think that we have to depend on God to meet us. Because I said, well, I can run down here and I can borrow something from such and such. But in those countries, such and such ain't got it. <laughs> so they all on this one level, and they got to pray the, their way out of it to receive from who? The head. The one that wants to be in charge. The one that they, they, they'll, they'll, they'll cry to and know that he's going to answer because they have nobody, no other place to have hope on. They can go to a witch doctor, but they know that there's nothing there. They know that's the demonic activity there. They want life. Amen. We won't be misled walking filled in the Holy Spirit. You'll never be misled. It might not come the way you want it, but it's going to come the way that he gives it. And through that, you're going to have a lesson that he's given you to learn. Amen? Like I said, when I did this teaching, I had to self-examine myself in areas that I see fit that I need to recognize that the Lord is working in me. Because we're all waiting on something, aren't we? We're groaning. We're groaning. Lord, I, I, I need, what, what's next? What's next? What's next is the wait. <laughs> Trust, rest, and wait. Trust, rest, and wait. And then next will come. And then victory will come. And everything else. And it will come perfect timing. It won't come out of time. It will come in a perfect time. Especially when you thought that you needed back then. Then you really need it at that time. Amen. Let's go to Romans 14. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Romans 14, verse 16. 
Therefore, do not let your good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. This manifests when we're filled with God. When you're filled with God, you'll walk in peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. That means you'll be walking in power. In power, because things will be moving. And, and things will be happening. Even when it seems like nothing's moving, nothing happening, something is really happening. God is bringing us up to another level and bringing us out of the things we're comfortable in for more anointing and more warfare so that we'll be able to battle more. So he'll show us where the more is to battle into areas that we have not been battling in. Amen? Within ourselves first so that we can battle for others. Amen? Because he wants us to get free so that we can help others get free. It's a bad place to be seeing other people get free and you're still bound up. Amen? You're telling people about the Lord, but you can't even trust the Lord yourself. And, 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 and then when you leave and you're weary, walking in weariness when you're supposed to be walking in truth. Amen? It happens. It happens. That's a come. We need a counselor to counsel us out of those things because something we might have touched and agree with that brought us into that area. Let's go to Psalms 15. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Man, I sing that song all the time. I drive Robert crazy. <laughs> I hear a beat going boom, boom, boom. And I'm like, oh, Lord, have mercy <laughs> on this weary soul. <laughs> Man, and the reason why, because I'm old, even when I think there's nothing wrong, I'm asking mercy for anything that could it be that I don't know. It could have been a thought that I, a thought that I forgot about. It could have been a word that I spoke that could have been hurting somebody that I didn't know that would have hurt or offended them in the wrong way that would weaken them instead of strengthen them. Because the enemy knows how to play those things, and we don't know when we beat the person that we spoke something that we didn't know. So you always consider mercy. You always consider to ask for forgiveness. For anything. Lord, have, I, I, Lord, I repent for sins unseen and unseen. Amen? Knowing and not knowing. Because he knows it all. Amen? Verse 1, Psalms 15. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle, who may dwell in your holy hill? He who walks upright and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his, what? So, but as you're checking yourself, you're speaking where? Truth within yourself. Right? He said, he who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take a reproach against his friend, and whose eyes a vile person is despised, but he honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his own hurts and does not what? Change. That means he stays stable. He stays stable. He don't change. He presses on. Says he does not put out his money as usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. That means that he don't promote himself. He don't look to himself to think that he has to promote himself because that really is fear when you try and promote yourself. And fear, fear protects what? Pride. Amen. And so, he who does these things shall never be moved. Amen. Let's go to Psalms 101. Verse 1. I will sing 
of mercy and justice to you, O Lord. I will sing praises. I will behave wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when will you come to me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. I hate the works of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. Our perverse heart shall depart from me. I will not know wickedness. Whoever secretly slanders his neighbor, him I will destroy. The one who has a haughty look and a proud heart, him I will not endure. My eyes shall be on the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He who walks in the perfect way, he shall serve me. He who works deceit shall not dwell within my house. He who tells lies shall not continue in my presence. Early I will destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all the evildoers of the city of the Lord. Now, dry bones always walk in disobedience. When you have a person that's not filled with the Holy Spirit, and that means that they're dry. And they will always walk in disobedience because they can't hear the voice of the Lord. Because they're hardened hearted. They're dried up because the demons have came in and dried out the moisture and made them dry again. They cannot overcome the flesh desires and, opinion, and, and they can't overcome their opinions. They always got opinions, but can't overcome themselves and their opinions. When you overcome with the Holy Spirit, you're able to see before you speak. So before you speak, you're able to see. Ah, oh, I can't say that. Or you want to say something, and but it's not timing to say it. Because you got to know that the time and season that needs to be spoken. If it's spoken too soon, it might turn the person out of balance. They look at what they did in the past and not willing to change for their, for their new position. So they look at all their accomplishments behind them, but can't change for what God has trying to put them in position for what he's trying to give them to the new. Because he wants to put that behind you. And so you don't rely on that strength, but you rely on his strength. Amen? All right, let's go to Galatians 5. Galatians 5, verse 13. We're almost done. Anybody receiving any of this today? Amen. I'm not the only one? No. Praise God. <laughs> so if you receive it, then use it. Because there's a battle that's going on within you. And you got to fight it to overcome it. And God placed this here so that you can receive this message today so that you can start working on it and using your tools. We all got blessed with tools, right? Some of us might have rusty tools, but we can get them cleaned up. We can dip them in the anointing and get them refreshed and renewed. Matter of fact, dip them in the blood first. <laughs> so you can get it back in position. And then dip it in. That's a double dip. Dip it in the anointing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Galatians 5, verse 13. For brothers have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. But through love, serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. I say then, 
walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and they are contrary to one another, so that you do not do things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. That means sin, death, and the grave. If you be underneath the law, that means sin, death, and the grave. That's what the law brings you. That's come to where it says the law, the law, the law enslaves you, but the spirit brings life. Amen. Now the works of the flesh are evidence, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatreds, contention, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice, practice, big word, practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, because Against such there is no law, and there those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passion and desire. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Our main purpose, this is our main purpose, is to be yielding to the Holy Spirit. That's our main purpose, to yield to the Holy Spirit, walking in the Holy Spirit, that the kingdom of God is manifested so that when they see you, they see the kingdom. They don't see nothing else. They don't see you no more. They see the kingdom, and they see it manifested by what you say, how you speak, how you conduct yourself, how you see things, how you give things, how you take things, how you cast down demons, raise up the dead, speak life into people's lives, bring a new mindset when you leave. When you leave out there, it'll be like this. Man, I was struggling. What happened? Because something that was in you was greater than what they was carrying in that world. Amen? Let our conduct be Controlled by the Holy Spirit. This is the thing we should check on. How our conduct is. It is our responsibility to hear the voice of God. It's nobody else's responsibility but ours. There is something that should automatically, that are expected from us. That should be automatic. That should not be a given for a believer. A believer should be able to be guided by the Holy Spirit. How is she going to be a believer? If you're not guided by the Holy Spirit. If you're not governed by truth. How are you going to be a believer? Because the word says, those who believe shall follow. That's what it means, right? That means deny thyself. Pick up your cross and follow who? The Jesus. But who's speaking? The Holy Spirit. Because he's on this earth right now by the power. We use Jesus with his name, his label. God showed me something this morning. It, I, I've never seen this before. But it's like a battery. You know, you have Duracell or you have EverReady or, or, or any of them. Now, the source is the Father. The name of the battery is Jesus. But the power that gives out the energy is the Holy Spirit. The source is the Father. The name is Jesus. And the power is the Holy Spirit that gives out the power. And keep on giving. <laughs> 
<laughs> but this power never dies out. Yes. I got that revelation this morning. I was like, wow. <laughs> Praise God. Now, there's, um, when you ask God to show him his face, he will show you your garbage so that you can clean it up, get right with him, so you can get closer to him. This is what I need you to do to drop, drop this so you can come closer to me. How is he going to get close to him? You got it. He's going to show you. And when you see it, don't be like, oh, man, I don't want to get rid of that. Oh. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Give it to me. <laughs> Give it to me. Be willing to do whatever it takes to get with God. When you gave your life to God, you made a covenant. Now it's time not to take it back. Not, it's not the time to take it back now because the world is getting crazy. Anybody seen how the world is today? Anybody been to Target and seen three bathrooms? Huh? Anybody seen uh, gay marriages and where they're raising up children and I feel sorry for the child that's being raised up because the child is a unisex. So they don't even know who if it's male or female. God didn't create Adam and Steve. God didn't even create even Yvette. <laughs> he made man and woman. And that was the order that he created so that things would be in order. And he made that to be, gov be governed as one when they come together in marriage. So it become complete. Amen? Like Paul said, if you can be single, be single like I am. Sometimes I think about that. <laughs> but I say, nah, I love my wife. <laughs> Your fruits are the garments Keep them clean. Keep them clean. Like Pastor says, put the garments on and then put on your full armor. Your garments is clean underneath and the full armor comes on. Then you're ready to battle. Ready to battle. As you do your garments and keep your garments clean on the inside, that keeps you clean. The armor is for the outside. The fight. As you stay pure. Don't get revived. Stay dead. Don't get revived by the enemy. Stay dead. Stay dead so he can't. When the devil tries to bring life back into you, say no. Like Nancy Reagan said back in the day, say no to drugs. I tried that. I couldn't. <laughs> because I didn't have the power of the anointing to break that yoke. I said no a few times, but I was picking it up at the same time. You know, dead men don't have feelings. Humble yourself before the hand of God, and he will exalt you. Love one another and exalt each other. Your words have power. If you stop condemning each other and start exalting each other, you might have a different life within your own self. And you might start seeing things differently and be able to be happy. No, be joyful instead of being miserable and bound. Because as you lift, the verse says that we're supposed to treat others better than we treat ourselves. And if we do that, then we're right with God. You know? Now, I found this in, in Ask to grant us Illumination and visitation through his word. Found this in our prayer book. Keeping us in a divine position. 
divine order, divine health. I know it. Divine favor and divine nature. Right? Exposing, expressing his character of love and will on earth as it is in heaven so that we can be in the reflection of what's going on up there. So stay connected. And then you can win this battle that's within you. Amen? Amen. God be the glory. Let's get our hearts prepared for a communion. Amen. Amen.